Hey y'all, this is uh, Lady T, aka Trinity38, coming at you live. Um, just wanted to weigh in on last night's episode of The Real Housewives of New Jersey, um, episode number 13. Um, I don't know if any of you, I'm sorry, because I'm about to sneeze. I'm trying to hold it. Um, if any of you guys watched that episode, um, you'll notice that. Danielle Staub is finally has finally seen her seen Kim G for who she really is. Now, if y'all have been watching this season um, uh, episode of The Real Housewives of New Jersey, you'll notice that this chick Kim G has come out of the woodworks. Kim G is not a real housewife of New Jersey. She is not physically or literally signed to the show. However, in season two, this season, she has somehow appeared on the show and appears to be attached at the hip to Danielle Stop. What I think is that um, she's trying to get airtime. She ain't got nothing else to do. And what better thing would it be than for her to get signed to, to Bravo TV to get on The Real Housewives of New Jersey? So she befriends Danielle Staub, pretending to be her friend and hanging out with her. All the while, every time Danielle gets into a confrontation or get, comes in the company of Teresa or Jacqueline or the Manzos, she's stirring the pot. Um, when Danielle's not there, she asks the questions, why aren't you, you know, I don't know what's going on, you know, with Danielle, you know, why you guys aren't getting along. I just want everybody to be friends and blah, 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 blah. Which isn't true. She she's a lion dog. She's just trying to stir the pot, trying to get information so she can take back to Dan to Danielle, and then so she can get information from Danielle and take it back to the man. So she playing both sides of the of the of the street. She's about to get hit. Is what's about to happen. Anyway, in last night's episode, Danielle goes over to Kim G's house and she confides in Kim G and she tells her, you know, um. I was adopted, and even though my mom, my adoptive mom did the best she could to raise me, you know, there are things that happened in my life that, you know, I believe shouldn't have happened. I'm assuming some type of abuse. She didn't go into detail. But because of that, you know, she's at a stage in her life where she wants to find her biological mom, who's a very emotional mom on the show. And even Kim G in that moment looked like she was gen genuinely concerned for Danielle and that she really wanted to help her. Well, something happened um, when Kim G went to, to the spa to get her nails done and her pedicure done. Um, Teresa was there, and she opened her big mouth and told Teresa that Danielle, her friend, told her that she's looking for her biological mom. Anyway, this information got back to um, some of Dan uh, Danielle's daughter's friends. Because when Danielle took her daughters out to eat, her daughters asked her, Hey, um, one of my friends says that... Uh, um, uh, Kim G was at the spa talking to Teresa and told Teresa that you're looking for your biological mom and of course Danielle immediately got very upset and she's like oh hell no uh, why did she tell Teresa of all she knows Teresa's my en enemy she know we don't get along we got this court case going on you know with her attacking me at the country club why would she tell her that so she calls Kim G on the phone and says hey we need to meet and talk about this so they get together and, and starts talking and um, at this restaurant, I think it's called the Portobello, it's the Italian restaurant in New Jersey. Now, you would think if Kim G really considered Danielle to be a, a friend and if she was genuinely sorry about, you know, telling uh, Teresa, you know, about Danielle's plan to find her biological mom, she would have immediately apologized. She would have said, you know what, Danielle? Um, yeah, I told Teresa that she was going to, you know, be looking for your biological mom. We was getting our nails done. She asked me what was going on on the Danielle front. And I just told her, you know, I was going to help you find your biological mom. I didn't know this was going to get, you know, get back to your daughters like that. But, you know, bottom line is, I'm sorry. I hope you can find it in your heart to forgive me. That's what Kim G should have said if she was truly Danielle's Bob's friend. Kim G didn't do that. <laughs> Kim G did not do that. She straight went to the left trying to accuse Danielle like Danielle done done something wrong. She didn't deny that she, you know, told put Danielle's business in the street. She didn't apologize for it. She proceeded to tell Danielle that 
she's um, a low life scum and that you know everything that the Manzos was saying about her is true and she couldn't believe that she befriended her and that she'd done everything for her and that Danielle used her chauffeur and she did this and that and blah 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 I mean she just caused this huge scene in this restaurant trying to make Danielle like look like she was this monster and re in reality she's the one who looked like the monster now she thinks she's going to go back to the Manzos and tell the Manzos, we have a huge education, everything you said was right, blah, 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 thinking that the Manzos and the Jacquelines and the Teresas of the world are going to accept them, accept her in their camp. She got another thing coming. Because they are already on to her. And last night's episode, or episode number 12, Jacqueline told her, like, look, when she came to her house, she's like, look, um... I'm just kind of confused, you know, you say Danielle is your friend, but yet, does Danielle know you over here talking to me, talking about her business? I mean, you say you her friend, but you sit up here talking about her behind her back, and you know, it just looks best, it looks like you're two-faced because you're playing both sides of the fence, which, that's a valid point, Jacqueline made a very valid point. You know what Kim G said? I don't get that, I'm her friend, I am supporting her, I'm her friend. Kim G is delusional. She's a delusional gutter butt. As much love in Kentucky like to say, that's one of her terms, gutter butt. Kim G is a gutter butt, and she's going to get hers. I'm not impressed. And I'm glad now that Danielle sees her, the snake, for who she really is. She needs to slither on off somewhere because she is not right, and I'm not interested in, in watching her. And I hope Bravo doesn't make her housewife because, um, yeah. Anyway. Enough of that. Minutes is running out, so I want to get to the Teresa thing. Um, I don't know how Teresa is living in a $5 million house, having all these extravagant christening parties, having all these extravagant, extravagant birthday parties for her 9-year-old daughter, having all these extravagant um, housewarming parties, and they filing for bankruptcy. I read an article in the New York Post that says that on August 22nd, there's going to be a public auction of her and her husband's personal property at her estate in New Jersey, at the mansion that we all see her and her husband living in um, on Bravo. The New York, New York Post also states that her husband Joe stated in his bankruptcy report that he only brings in $3,200 a month. Teresa said in her paperwork that she brings in $3,300 a month, and that's the income that she earns from Bravo TV, which is not true, because each of those ladies make at least about fifty dollars to $75,000 every season. So season one, they made between fifty dollars to seventy-five grand each for that three-month bid, and now this season, they're making between fifty dollars to $75,000 for season two. So she's making way more money than she's claiming... Um, uh, on the show. Anyway, every time you see this chick, she buying something new. They, uh, her and her husband had her. They had a ten uh, year wedding anniversary. Now they could have went out to a restaurant, had dinner, went dancing, and they went home and did their thing. No, he rented a helicopter so they could fly over New York and New Jersey. Then took her to this nice hotel and presented her with this big old rock, which, I mean, if it's real, I'm sure that rock cost thousands and thousands of dollars that they could not afford, but yet they fall in bankruptcy. Teresa needs to stop fronting and stop living above their means. I honestly believe that, that on the, not this episode, last night's episode, but episode number 12, go back and watch it, y'all. You'll see him showing her... Um, Showing her the apartments, which she's calling suites, above the pizzeria that he just opened. He's saying, you know, we may have to move here. Uh, she looked at him like he was kidding, but I'm thinking, you know what? He probably ain't lying. They probably will end up living above their pizzeria because they done bit off way more than they can chew. She's fronting like, um, like she GQ smooth, like, you know, I don't have a credit limit. I, what is a credit limit? I can do whatever I want. My kids wear designer clothes, blah, 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 blah. Teresa, stop fronting. Anyway, y'all, I'm running out of time. Um, chime in. Let me know what you think. If you agree or don't agree with what I'm saying, rate the video. Comments, 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 comments. If you like what you see, subscribe to my channel. I'd love to have people on my channel. Give me some views. So anyway, to next video. Peace out, y'all. Bye.